Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. Let me take these off, man. Dre's not here, so I'm the only one listening to me. And y'all listening to me? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Discipline Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, EL Discipline, and tonight's topic is a very intriguing topic. I'm going to talk about chapter title, episode 31, Pussy is Power, Dick is Control, Destruction of Discipline, on sale everywhere now. Uh, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, Books a Million. This is the sequel, Discipline's World. This is the trilogy, The Immortality of Discipline. Okay? You get a bundle package, uh, all three books, whatever. But you're going to want to get all three books because, obviously, there's, it's a trilogy. So, you know, there's a cliffhanger in every book, and including the last one. We're going to talk about Pussy is power, dick is control. And I know you guys have been anticipating this because I know y'all are fiends and y'all know what that means. I'm serving you your dose weekly of discipline therapy where everything is completely free. See, if you subscribe, there's no monthly fee. It's free. It's judgment free, sucker free, censor free, sensitive free, and plenty of liberty. God and the ancient ancestors are great and that means everything else is straight. So go grab your wine, popcorn, or my favorite roll of blood, but make sure the children are in bed, especially for this, because I have some soul food conversation. Prepare your mind to be fed. Light one up, inhale life, and exhale strife. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are tuned in to the Discipline Debbie Podcast. I'm here with you all. Okay, uh, my co-host couldn't make it this evening. She has uh, plenty of business to take care of. Things are starting to pick up, so she's taking care of business. But she's going to be with us for episode 79 and 80, which will be the season finale. Today's episode is episode 78. Like I said, I'll reiterate, Pussy is Power, Dick is Control, which is chapter 31 in The Seduction of Discipline. Okay, so I'm going to get into it. Now, why did I come up with this chapter? Well, the book came out in 2017, and prior to that, there has been a, there was an array of things on social media. Women guessing their head up. Women creating memes. You know, I'll suck your soul. I'll this or that. You know, I got a fat ass. I got I got a good head. I do like just talking about their sexual talents is what they bring to the table. You know, it was like getting out of control. So I was like, you know what? Like I want to put this out there because, you know. These women are only um, behaving this way or think this way is the only reason is because men have gassed them up. I mean, how are you going to know if you have good pussy if you're not hearing that praise constantly? You're, you're not getting those va- the validation and the attention and, you know, somebody cooperating your story that you have good pussy. So how are you going to get that? You know, you you can't test it out yourself, right? So, you know, good pussy is subjective. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I wrote it in the Seduction of Discipline, chapter 31. You go to the table of contents. Uh, 332. Let's see. Table of contents come in handy. I'll be looking for this shit all day. Now, why do I believe pussy is power, dick is control? Because I feel like power is something that can constantly um, change hands. Um, let's look at, for example, the way corporate is structured is the way like the mafia is structured. Where you have, um, you know, where you have soldiers, uh, and those soldiers could be an array of things. For example, whether it's gang members or corner boys that are, you know, selling product, they're the ones who are the closest to the money, right? And then after the soldiers, like you have like the capos, the captains, and then you have the 
underboss, consigliere, and then you have the um the boss. So to break it down in a corporation aspect, take Walmart, Target, whatever it is, CVS. The cashiers are like the soldiers. So they're on the bottom. They're the ones closest to the money. They're the ones closest to the product. They're the ones that actually interact with the customers. Then you have the managers who are like the distributors, um, the ones that kind of control and put everybody in line and, um, you know, work, like work with personnel. And then you have the um, then you have like the boss, which is like the plug, the connection for the whole operation. So that is where you get all the product. Um, they're the ones that come up with the ideas. They diversify and all of that. Now, these are the, also synonymous with the CEOs. These CEOs are the ones furthest away from the money, but they make the most money, which is the irony. So I look at pussy as power that way, whereas it could be constantly changed hands. In a corporate aspect, you buy out a, another company, you own it, you crush your competition. In a street thug or, or um, you know, whatever you want to call it, that aspect, go over it and you want that territory, you just, you take it over, whether it's force, whether it's um you know are you catching a body you know whatever it is you eliminate whoever is in charge of that territory so you can take over that territory so it's kind of like synonymous with that now whenever you take over something else now you have power of it that's what i see as pussy it is something that is constantly changing hands power is pussy because it's the allure and i say dick is control because dick is consistent let me give you another example when a man sees a beautiful woman he's lusting after her he might confuse himself that he thinks he likes her but it's just the lust talking my advice would be if it's driving him crazy he has to have sex with her so he can know if he really does like her after that. Because lust for men and women is different. And I talked about this in the last episode. Y'all need to go back. When a man gets that lust out, he's already on to the next. He's disgusted of you. You're going to have to keep his interest so you get another round, get claimed, etc. Right? I've talked about this in my audio show as well. Now... For lustful women, it's different. The better it is, and and they orgasm, they're gonna build on emo- they're gonna build an emotional attachment with you. There's this um, love drug. It's a chemical that's called oxytocin, also dopamine. These things drip more out of women's brains than men, and they start to build an emotional attachment with you. So that's how I look at pussy. Pussy is like, oh my God, you want her so bad. The moment you get her, you don't want her no more because you got the lust out. So it's constantly changing hands because now he found a new woman. So now your pussy is no longer power. But if you find good dick, if you find great dick, if you find demon dick, because it's a rarity, there's more women in this world than there are men. If you find that and it is able to dominate you and give you that pleasure that you've been seeking forever, had fantasies about or whatever it is, right? Every, every woman is subjective of what they like in the bedroom. Um, you're going to gravitate towards that more and you're going to try to lock that down because that is it's rare to find. So if it's rare to find, that's a con- that's control because it's going to remain consistent. It can't it can't ever change hands unless you meet better dick. But then when you meet better dick, it depends what else is attached to it for women. Because most men and women women are different, and men are different when it pertains to sex. So a good pussy is subjective. You know what I'm saying? It could be clean from what to beginning. Um, even if a woman had like four kids, six or whatever it is, she could still have good pussy. 
But if she's had like 20 to 15 guys, 15 to 20 guys, 25 to 50 guys, no. You see, pussy's like a vehicle, you know, and that elasticity is what is prime and precious for pussy. So it's like it's different with men and women because the more he's fucking, the better he's getting at it. Um, and the better the dick will feel for you, but the more she's fucking, especially if she's fucking men who have girth, not just length, I'm talking about width, that can make it less pleasurable for the both of you. Because most men like tight pussy. Now, why are men, why are men more shamed? For having small dicks, but women aren't shamed for having loose pussy. Uh, I've never met women have loose pussy. Probably them hoes out there, um, them strippers who fuck for money. I'm not saying all strippers do that, but them strippers who fuck for money, those prostitutes probably got loose pussy. But I've never encountered loose pussy um, because I know how to pick them. So, you know, a woman that's celibate should be actually praised and congratulated more than women out here who were just fucking and women out here who were just out there showing that talk about their sexual talents and everything like that um but they aren't so to me you know like it's it could be dangerous it could be dangerous when you have these, one of these things, whether a good pussy or a good dick, because if it's attached to a toxic person, it can be dangerous. You know, um, I know how my sex is. I'm not going to talk about my girth or anything like that, but I do other things before that. I love foreplay. So this is what puts me above a lot of men because most men just want to get into it, just ram it in and whatever, get themselves off. But if you encounter a seducer, if you encounter a master in a bedroom, a dominant, you know, um, even a sexual deviant, a nympho, maniac, uh, a woman, it's different. Most women have been digmatized and they don't want to admit it or they might not even realize it. So what is digmatized? Digmatize is pretty much dick. They took dick and hypnotized and they put it together and it's digmatized. So back in the ancient times when um, those ancient um, mag uh, magicians or um, even psychiatrists would take like something uh, like a dangling um, locket or something like that and they would uh, dangle it back and forth. And they would tell you to keep like your eyes, make sure your eyes follow it. So it's supposed to put you in a trance and then you do what the administer says. So just for, to summarize, it's putting a spell on somebody. So, you know, most women are being digmatized. And when a woman is digmatized, what will she do? Well, when she's digmatized, it's like the dick controls her life. It's not the man that controls her life. It's the dick controls her life. The dick might make her feel, might make her be loyal and they're not in a serious relationship. The dick might make her, um, you know, lay on the bed with the phone on her face because you said you were going to call her later for her to pick up. The dick might make her wait for you and you're working late. The dick might make her iron his work clothes and he's not even employed. You know, the dick might make her, you know, call you and be like, hey, daddy, you know, I saw something in the the um the store, you know, what's your size again? Oh, I think this would look really cute on you. You know, the dick might make her give you money. The dick might make her help you out. The dick might make her just invest in you. 
might make her be loyal, might make her listen, obey. It is the woman that's stigmatized. So, um, you got to understand that if women say that they never experienced this, one, they're lying, or two, we play devil's advocate and give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're not lying because they never experienced it. So they don't even know what the fuck it is. They've had a lot of shit, guys. And I don't even, I don't, I'm not even talking about guys who are just little dicks. I'm talking about guys who probably had uh, big dicks, uh, medium size, and they just couldn't, they just didn't know how to use it. They were just a uh, back and forth ramming guy. They weren't like, a, you know, moving your hips to the side in a circular motion. They weren't like grabbing her, um, her shoulders while he's penetrating for her back or the back of her neck or pulling her, spanking her ass with it. They weren't, you know, putting a hand around her throat um erotic is officiation while they were doing um while they were penetrating they weren't also shit talkers f verbally seducing her into submission you, you like that du -du -du -du. turn the fuck around do the go that shit is wet grab that right there lean behind spread that open for daddy verbally you know seducing her into submission they they're, they're not out here they're a rarity um, so she's never been stigmatized because all of those things is putting a woman through a spell to a point where, you know, I also have, um, chapter 21, fuck you till you can't walk. Uh, or another one I have fuck her so good. She's thinking about it the next day. All of these are in this book, The Seduction of Discipline. So it's like, you know, it, it just it just depends the type of man you're dealing with. But let's go back to the fuck you till you can't walk. There's things that women want in the bed that are subjective, that are also conditional, right? I'm going to be this way for you in bed if you do this or you do that or you make six figures or you're this height or whatever it is, right? So every woman is different. Every woman wants different things. but but all women want specific things in the bedroom you know these are um fetishes um like kinks and fetishes are different so let's say a woman is a, a woman has a kink right she she loves to be in um she loves to have threesomes that's a kink she she wants swingers that's a kink she wants to engage in bdsm that's a kink she um She's like a bi curious. That's a kink. But if she has a fetish, these are examples of fetishes. Paraphilias. She might have a foot fetish. She might have an ass fetish. Oh my God, I like the way a man's ass looks. I want to grab it or whatever. Hard limit for me. You know, I've already stated this. Nothing in or around it. Nobody's eating my ass. Nobody's touching my ass, grabbing my ass. None of that stuff. I've heard women say, oh my God, you have such a nice ass or whatever. Don't even think about it. I've told them. You had dream about it. That's the closest you're going to come in your dreams to touching it. <laughs> um, but some women have a fetish. Oh my God. Like, I just love a man in a beard. Uh, big hands. You know, his hands are so nicely done. Um, manicured, um, uh, tattoos, muscles, um, in intelligence, like a sapiosexual out there. That's a fetish. Just giving you an ex examples, a big dick. That's a fetish. Man might be a ass guy or like a big ass. That's a fetish. Oh, he might be a titty guy. Oh, I just want to stick my face between him and motorboat. You know what I'm saying? That's, that could be a fetish for him, but it's not, it's not a kink. So those are different things. So you have to understand that there are certain fetishes that women have that a lot of men can't fulfill and their partners don't coincide with their fetishes. You know what I'm saying? And they never fulfill this stuff. So a woman can have erotic officiation. I'll explain. A man putting his hand around your throat, squeezing the sides of it with his fingers. Not the actual th throat, the, the air, but you practice the blood choke. And I've talked about this in BDSM episodes. Y'all need to go back. The blood choke. 
not the air choke. The windpipes are fragile. So the erotic officiation, asphyxiation, she might, that's a, that's a fetish. I like to be choked. That's a fetish. She could be the most CEO, uh, alpha financially, um, dominant, ordering people around, running a boardroom, bossy. But in there, she has this type of fetish. She wants to be very submissive. You know, being submissive, that's a kink, not a fetish. So I just want to differentiate for people out there so you can know. So um, most men are pussy whipped. And the reason some people could say, oh, you know, pussy is power because we all come from pussy. False. I'm a technical boxer. You know, he's going to get this type of debate with me. There are some women out there who have had C-sections. So what you're saying is in invalid. You know, not all of us. You, you see what I'm saying? But I understand the concept. I understand what it is. Yes, it breeds life. However. The male seed is still the master because you cannot get, you cannot uh, mold that life without it. Even if you go get to the sperm bank, the hospital, it's coming from a man. So you still need the man to, to, to do it. Um, so some people may say that's why pussy is power. Oh my God, men have killed for it. Men have gone to war for it. Men have stole for it. Men have fought their friends for it. Men have fought niggas for it or whatever it is. Oh, okay. I think those are beta males. I think those are simps, you know. Um, but the reality is, the reality is, there's more women in this world than there are men. So if 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 good dick is hard to find and pussy is everywhere pussy's not power only to like some gumps old geezers uh betas that are in the strip club all the time hiring prostitutes and all of that stuff if pussy was power and and um sex can 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 change men's character and all of this shit and really cuff men strippers prostitutes escorts sex workers they would all be married all the, their fucking shit would be out of business like the new generation of kids would even know what prostitution is when you say prostitution what is prostitution strippers what is it cuz it would be there would be no more of it men are not Men won't stay where they're the most sexed. They're going to stay where they're the most loved. So just like I said prior, you could give a man pussy. That's a lot of men's end goal. You give him pussy, he's thirsty for that. Okay, now he got that shit out the system. He ain't thirsty for you no more. You see? So at the end of the day, like, pussy is not power because if it is, then it would do these things for men. That's why I feel like, Dick doesn't have to be power. Dick is actually control. Dick is something that is dominant. Dick is dick is something that we associate with with um masculinity. So if you see a man with a little dick, I'm talking to women, you know, or non-heterosexual males, you know, I don't leave y'all out either. Y'all are welcome to tune into the show and stuff. Non-heterosexual males, it does it, it it means that he has low testosterone. It means that he doesn't have a lot of masculine energy because when we look at dick, especially big dick, we we associated that with big dick energy. We associated that we associate that with high masculinity. So a man with a big dick is inclined to doing a whole bunch of shit, being a shark, getting what he wants in life, probably possibly being an asshole, being a bad boy doing things that's that goes against the grain uh, uh against the norm you know i would take for my example uh both my parents are reverends they weren't reverends before you know but they've been reverends for probably eight nine years now nobody in my um family has tattoos 
So that's an example of going against the grain, going against social constructs, going against religion. You know what I'm saying? This is a man that has uh, this is a man that has a weapon. This is a man that has a big tool, and he knows it. This breeds confidence. So with that, he's gonna get a whole bunch of stuff. Now, big dick ain't nothing if it doesn't have stamina behind it or endurance. So at the end of the day, you could ask women: Does size really matter? Not everybody's. Not every woman's gonna say yes. Some women are gonna say, "Um, the ocean, um, in the mo the motion in the ocean, or whatever they say." right? So it's how you move. And that may be right. She might be a sensual woman. She might be an affectionate woman. She might want you to take your time with me type of woman. She might, I want kisses too type of woman. I'm romantic type of woman. Don't just come into it and just ram me right away. I want you to eat that pussy. Suck on that clit. May create eight with your tongue. Up and down. Take your time. Be patient with it. Spread those. Get in it like um wedding crashers when we saw Vince Vaughn and, and Owens and he was just like, Owens was like and Vince Vaughn was all of it. It was all on his nose and all that. They're looking for those type of guys. So at the end of the day, there's different types of women. So that might be a woman that will say, yeah, the size doesn't matter. But what you're doing to, to make up for that, foreplay, the motion and all that, because a man can have a big dick and he's just ramming you and she could have looked at something like porn or whatever. And she's like, oh, I want to get that pleasure too. So she's just psyching herself to like it, but she's not really liking it. The, it she's actually going through pain. That's what I'm talking about. Not every woman orgasms through penetration. So a man could be saying, oh, my baby, I got a big dick and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that to you. Meanwhile, she never had an orgasm in her life. So it's like in that moment, it's like, when when men, and I generalize men, when they get into relationships or they get with a lover or whatever it is, they start fucking her the same way they were fucking the last chick and the last chick. Not kings and gods. Kings and gods are different because kings and gods are observant. Kings and gods are dominant. Kings and gods, kings and gods have great eye discipline. They use all their senses to study a woman. So he knows that she's different from everybody else, and I got to learn her. She might not be able to come, but I guarantee I will make her because not just because of my technique, but because I'm going to learn her, learn her moans, learn her, you know, she might be flinkling, flinching a little bit, cl clutching. You're learning all these different things, uh, um, heavy breathing, breathing patterns change. So you're aware of all these things, and that's how you're able to. Um, pleasure her even if she tells you what she likes in the beginning because a lot of women can say they like something and then when they're actually experiencing it it's really not what they thought it was they could be just copying friends or whatever it is they're following the trend so you have to you have to understand this as a man that when i look at dick and i look at pussy i associate them with men and women so when you have a dominant man, you know, who's also alpha and he has a big dick and he's a king and, and a god, he's going to give you the best pleasure. His dick will become control for you. When you have a woman who is in her divine feminine, she's spiritual, she's intelligent. She has a few toxic tendencies, not like 20 of them. She's healed. This is when we can say pussy is power for that specific woman. But not every woman is in this category because a lot of women are broken. Past relationships, childhood traumas, whatever, poverty, PTSD, uh, you know, uh, traumas from public public display display of disaster so you know maybe a woman was molested when she was young raped uh, abused verbally abused physically abused whatever they went through that it can suppress that 
to a point where they don't know themselves and the energy that they're giving out through their pussy is toxic. Well, their pussy's not really good. You see? And that's the difference. Me, I correlate sex with energy. So if you have a man who's in his divine masculine, spiritual and all of that shit, it really don't matter what size his dick is. If he has a big dick, it's a bonus. Because him, him being all those things, excluding his dick, and then you add his dick into it, you're automatically going to get the best pleasure because of all these things. You know, so most women, you know, like I was saying earlier, want disrespectful sex. They want to experience all these things. However, it has to be in a man to do that. Like you might want, a, you might say, oh, I love to be choked or whatever. It is. But is it in him for, for him to be able to do that? Does he like the same things you do? If he doesn't, mm, one or two things are going to have to happen. You're probably going to shut the fuck up and stay in that relationship and just have boring vanilla sex. Or you're going to probably end up stepping out. Maybe a one night stand because you just want to experience it. Maybe stepping out completely but you still stay in the relationship and keep it a secret or you just break up with the guy you know what i'm saying would be the third option so yeah there's a there's a third option you know so for a lot of women sometimes that is a deal breaker like yo i gotta meet a guy that actually likes the same shit i like sexually because there's some crazy fucking shit weird shit that i like sexually that vanilla men think is weird, but this guy would be like, oh my God, where you been all my life? That I can't just get with a regular guy, even if he had a lot of money and he was rich. If he's not into that, then it's a deal breaker. There are some women out there like this. They may not articulate it because, you know, ancient times and society has always made women to be pristine and, you know, the body's a temple and, you know, women shouldn't have dirty minds and all this stuff. So they might not articulate this, you know, because of the judgment and resentment from their significant other. You know, now I don't believe women should be like this in public. But for your significant other behind closed doors, you could be a freak. You could be his slut. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. But all these women that are doing this, shit, whatever, that's why you're still single. That's why you'll get with a guy for a month and then he'll be he'll lie to you and do all these things yeah we're in a relationship once he gets the pussy he starts showing you his true colors you might find out he had a wife cheating all this stuff he oh why are you not doing the same things you're not you know, problems emerge and then you see it and that's only because he want, just wanted the pussy he just wanted the notoriety he saw you had notoriety oh i'm just gonna use her to get famous myself she's an ig model or, you know, but I'll lie to her and tell her she wants a relationship because that's what women want, relationships. So I'll just lie to them and tell them I want a relationship, but I really don't. I just want the pussy. When there's men out here that wear masks that will say that. So ultimately, women have to know how to pick them. Y'all don't study men enough. You know what I'm saying? Sex is a major part. After the second date or third date, when you feel like it's going to get there, y'all need to talk about this. The difference is in a DS relationship or um, BD, the BDSM lifestyle, there's negotiations. This stuff is talked about prior. A lot of vanilla relationships, modern relationships don't engage in this. A lot of them just go with the flow. And that's why there's so much failures in relationships, men not knowing, men not knowing women, women not knowing men. There's so much failures in relationships. There's a miscommunication. There's a discrepancy. There's no communication. It's not effective. It's not adequate. There's no acceptance. There's this. Oh my God, I didn't know you was into this. We've been together for three years. I never knew you was into this. All of those things happen. So, women have to understand that if you want this type of man, the disrespectful sex and all that, he has to have this type of gangster in him. He has to have this type of asshole in him. And a lot of men 
can't be two things. It's very rare you're going to find a gentleman and an asshole. A gentleman and a beast. It's very rare. The gentleman out there can be the gentleman in the bed. Oh my God, you want me to choke you? Why? Why do you want me to do something so terrible? What if I kill you though? Are you going to call 911? I mean, I'm kind of scared. I'm, now he has a feeling of inadequacy. So you have to really find this in a man. And that's why the assholes always win and the nice guys finish last because women correlate everything with sex. So a woman could think, yo, he's so fucking arrogant. He's so cocky. Look at him. He's, he's an asshole. At the same time, her pussy's getting wet because she's just thinking also of the things that, like, imagine if he brought that energy into the bedroom. He's so fucking intense and passionate. He's a fucking dick. But imagine if he brought that in the bedroom. And women think like that more than men because women are more attention to detail. They use their brain more efficiently. So the sad thing for a lot of women is there's a plethora of you who will never experience this shit. And it's because there's not a lot of men that are like this, that are built like this. You know, there are women out there who have high sex drive. They have toys. They have desires that are hidden. and um you know, like they're hiding these things from their husbands, their boyfriends. They can't share it with them. They'll never fulfill these desires that they have. You know, at the end of the day, you know, dick is control. Pussy is power to, I feel like weak men, beta males. You know, I don't believe pussy is power. Um, Just the way I've never believed pussy was power, even before I got into the BDSM lifestyle. So, you know, I can see it being power to men who can't get pussy, to men who a lot of women don't want to fuck, uh, men who can't get women. I can see how it is power to them. Um, they'll do a lot of things. I've done door to door. I've seen it. If you make all the money, you don't want to buy this product. You're saying she makes all the rules, but you make the money. She's a housewife. Yeah, I got to talk to the boss. Beta. You know, so to him, that pussy might be power. So, you know, he just got to learn how to differentiate. But even if she got bomb pussy, I got bomb dick. So it's like, if you mix it, if you, if you engage together, I'm always going to win. You know, you look at it like, you look at it like men and women, right? Take the, um, take like the number one dominant female athlete. Right off the top of my head, Serena Williams came up. Serena Williams, no disrespect, but I'll beat her ass in everything except for tennis because tennis is her craft. I don't even know how to fucking play tennis, but I could probably learn YouTube practice a little bit and then master and be like, all right, let's go one on one. And I'll probably win. Um just because it's just my stamina is gonna be better than hers. Men just have better stamina than women. So um it's on a physical capacity. So I'll beat her in everything. I'll beat her in basketball. All I'll do is post up on her. Mm, back up, back up, post up on her, right? No referee, no fouls, just street ball. I'll beat her in basketball. Obviously, I'll beat her in football. I'll beat her in amateur wrestling, like real wrestling, not like WWE wrestling, real wrestling. That's what I did in high school and college. So, um, and I played football. So I'll beat her in all those physical sports, boxing, no doubt. That's what I've mastered in. I'll beat her in all those physical sports. Um, Ronda Rousey. Only thing Ronda Rousey is going to touch me in is jujitsu. She a master at that. Um, but I'll beat her in boxing. She, if people don't know who Ronda Rousey is, she's in WWE now. That's why I talk about her. She's an ex-UFC female champion. Um, I'm from the streets. So I know street fighting. So even if we did MMA, I'll beat her in that. Um, because I don't play fair, I don't fight fair. Um, I'll beat her in basketball. So this is what I'm talking about. When you look at dick and pussy and you associated with men and women, I'm not talking about you got a big dick guy who's skinny, weakling and all of that stuff. Like, I mean, man, maybe those skinny guys 
or whatever it is, but they still got a little strength to them. Um, you know, maybe. But women see a big dick and he's a skinny guy, she just gonna wanna ride you. Oh my god, a big dick. If you got a little dick, she's not gonna ride you, but she's not gonna wanna ride you. But if she sees you're a skinny guy and you got a little dick, she's gonna wanna ride you. But if she sees you got a big dick and you have muscles and stamina, she's gonna want you to dominate her. She's not gonna wanna ride you. So that's that. Um, you know, so you, you just like that's how I kind of differentiate pussy is power and dick is control. At the end of the day, dick is controlling the entirety and pussy is power, but it's um it expires. So that so if if we want to summarize it, pussy is lust, because lust expires, and dick is love because love is forever so if you look at it more women fall in love with good dick versus men falling in love with good pussy a man can have good pussy he'll still do you dirty he'll still walk out on you he'll still have another chick he'll still do this he'll still lie steal do all this we look at baby boy baby boy with tyrese gibson and taraji uh edson driving the car no license, shit like that. That's a perfect example, even though that was a fictional film. At the end of the day, that good pussy is just going to get the guy for the moment. It's not going to keep him. But because women are more emotional and they associate love and sex, the better it is, the more she's going to love with you. And if she's coming, she's building even more emotional attachment with you because only 83% of women aren't being satisfied. 17 are. 90% not experiencing orgasms. 10% are, and that could be them doing it by themselves. So that means this experience, her climaxing, is a rarity. So if she's experiencing that, she's going to build a lot of shit with that. If a man comes from good pussy, he already got himself off. Okay, good. I'm feeling good today. <laughs> I'll, I'll go home to my wife. Oh, but it's not going to make him loyal. Whereas a woman, the better it is, the more it's going to come with it. Loyalty. She'll listen. She'll, she might even be submissive. She might invest in you. You, you need money. She might. She got you. She a ride or die now. She, um, she'll, she'll do the craziest shit. That shit fucking give her powers to fucking make her think she could fucking walk on water. Go out to the fucking beach walking on water. That shit will give her powers. Thinking that she'll stay up with, oh my God, like, let me, you, oh, you get off work late? Let me just come over and get like 20 strokes, you know? Even though I got to be up at 6 a.m. It's 2 a.m. right now. Even though I got to be up at 6 a.m., let me just do that. That's what Dick will do. You know, because that's a rarity to get. Good pussy's all over the place. Good pussy is literally all over the place. And women don't literally have to do nothing to have good pussy, but just later in missionary, like you're dead and the dude is fucking you. Because I said what, what my subjective thing of good pussy is the right tightness, wetness, odorless, right? Wet from beginning to end. She don't have to do nothing but maintain it, right? not fuck a lot right take care of that shit get a brazilian wax and all that right the man on the other hand he has to actually put in work for you to know he got big dick he gotta put in work physically physically put in work the women don't have to put in work to have good pussy so ultimately who has the power here dick versus pussy it's it, it, it's what it's attached to. So, at the end of the day, pussy may be power. That's subjective. I don't believe it. It's subjective. However, dick is really control. So, once again, ladies and gentlemen, you were tuned in to Disciplin Therapy. Peace.